for my new book. I'll show you more, and I have the book in here so you can see a little bit later. Uh, so uh, now it's time to see what I do when, I, uh, when I'm working on uh, children illustration as well, and also a little bit of editorial illustration. In editorial illustration, you have to be aware that the image is not as important as text. So image just is accompanying the article in the newspaper. So it needs to be a little bit toned down when it comes to the importance. So there is a priority and this is of a secondary importance, but also it needs to be done in a way that the person who is reading the newspaper can connect immediately and believe it or not, sometimes if you are reading uh, the magazines, uh, uh, you will decide whether you are going to read the article or not, not only based on the type, but also based on the image. So you will see this one, and immediately you will see that whether this is a topic that you want to read or not. Of course, if, even if I don't explain anything about this, you can see that this is the comment about the savings, about the banking system, about the communication, different points of view, about the environment, about the pollution, and uh, many different things inside. This is a personal project. This is what I do for fun. Uh, this is my sister-in-law. Uh, she's having a band in Germany, in Cologne, and she wanted to have a CD cover and a T-shirt, and she wanted to have the, something that is comment about the members of the band. So this guy over there that is playing the drums. His name is Uli, and he's having three kids, and the three kids are pictured there with the, these three small flowers over there. And he's also a handyman, so that's why you have the, the hammers and bolts and tools over there. Uh, Alexander over there on bicycle, he's very famous because he drinks way too much beer and listens a lot of music and he is a really frequent when it comes to cycling. And each and every image over there is having a tiny little story in, inside. This is my first book for Tumblr Books and it's about Canada. And uh, it is really, really interesting to see these images because sometimes you think as an illustrator or animator you're going to just go out and do your stuff, but actually it needs to be really carefully planned and structured. Because the book is about the uh, granny who took her grandchildren across Canada from province to province, we needed to have something very, very specific. So I was uh, provided with a lot of images uh, from my editor and I needed to be really precise. And I'm showing you these images about Canada also, you know, would you like to try some tale of a viewer, Samuel de Champlain, and the moose, and the kid from the book. And this is also how Canadian kids are usually spending summer on the left side. Am I right, Mr. Ambassador? This is one on the left. He is there. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, what the author liked about the, the entire book is that you can see the uh, hamster over there. Actually, Hamster was just there in the in the script, so she didn't uh, she didn't plan to do anything about the Hamster. But I pull out the Hamster in a way that is going to be in a very funny situation, and it turns out the children reacted to this Hamster more than uh, to the kids. Uh, so she was really happy to see that sometimes something really small in the manuscript could play a very big and vital role in the storytelling. And a couple of comics about Canadian history. Uh, so, in Canada, uh, many, many uh, years ago, uh, first settlers were trading with the first and uh, they were using the rivers as highways because there were no highways in Canada. So this is just a comment. But this is also something that is really precise because they were actually using this kind of uh, a canoe. They were using, they were sleeping over there uh, under this uh, uh, thing. Also, uh, one on the right is uh, this Northway passage and story about exploration uh, in the Canadian North. It really happened, uh, and the entire comic needed to be very accurate in terms of history, in terms of the costumes, in terms of uh, facial expression. So, these two images actually went through a lot of to a lot of uh, uh, refinements uh, with the art director because we needed to be really, really precise. So because this is an educational book, Canadian kids need to have this very accurate information. So they should connect with the Canadian history, but also they will have to learn something that was uh, based in reality, based in history. This is my first book for, for uh, my publisher, current publisher, Brown Books, and I'm seeing from 
uh, Toronto. Uh, I'm very happy to be included in their catalog. And this was a story about a small boy who was not very happy because his parents were moving and he decided to run away from home and he fell into the hole of the construction site. And then, of course, you can see what happened in the hole. So he got uh, in contact with, uh, with this very smart mall. And there is an entire adventure that is actually uh, taking place inside of the hole. This was done by, this was written by the famous Canadian writer and children writer, uh, Kerry Fagan. He's, he's an amazing guy and he's a really, really good writer. And this is Korea edition, which was printed this year. A couple of things, and this is the English edition. Then who fell in call. And this is the second book that I've done for them. And I'm showing you this one because I wanted to show you my schedule. So I wanted to show you how I start uh, working on the project. So usually I read the manuscript, and I read the manuscript about you know, 10, 15 times just to get the ideas. And all the times when I'm reading, I have my pencil and schedule on the side. So I start with, uh, with the characters. And because the story uh, is about two girls, one is civilized and living in a regular house, and the other one is living in the cave, and they are friends. We needed to have this kind of uh, this kind of imagery, but also when I mentioned that there should be some kind of dualism or some kind of opposition. So one uh, one girl is very neat and uh, uh, very ordinary girl, and the other one is just like really messy hair and she's not very clean. And uh, if you want to get familiar with the character, make him or her more believable. Uh, and also you're going to feel more and more comfortable with your character as you go. So that's why I put a lot of this stuff on, on paper as much as possible. And I draw the characters in different situations. So when it comes to the final execution, I feel really comfortable so I can draw the character from any point of view, in any kind of situation, and it is going to be believable. If you think that your character is just going to pop up on a paper on the first day or in the first week, this is not going to happen. Most likely this is not going to happen. And the publisher was not very happy with, with the character of the old lady uh, because in the book she's supposed to be 92 years old. So I put, I made the granny, but uh, the granny was too young. So they wanted uh, the older one. So I just put these things on paper. And those are the sketches for the front cover. And those are the final illustrations. As you can see, I changed it. So uh, I rendered this one as black and white uh, watercolors because the feel is going to be a little bit different. So it's not like a stretch board, it's not digital. So they wanted to have this very personal feel because the story is really sweet. And just the black and white, there she is, uh, the old lady. They're climbing the tree over there. This is the front cover. They were very happy with the front cover uh, when I did this because this is a triangular composition. So three characters, the cat, the girl, and the other girl that is upside down. And they were also very happy because I put this raccoon uh, over there on a tree. So it's like a tiny little peculiar image that is going to be there. And my last book, uh, I, I wrote it here. It's a shameless short story. And I show you this image. Uh, this book is... Uh, it's already published. It will be shipped to Canada uh, market on, in August. And it's about the small boy who is, he, who is not tall enough. So he's very sad because not, he can't reach the things in his house. And he figured out one day that if he is uh, putting on a mom's high heels shoes, he will be able to, to uh, pick the things from, uh, from the house. And the entire story is about the shoes. But the story is also about being unique or different, or about uh, the, our identity. It might be uh, any kind of identity, personal identity. And this is the end paper. So this is the paper that connects the, the printed sheets with the covers. And I use this one not only to demonstrate that I can do a lot of different shoes, but also to comment in a way. So this is a visual metaphor about how we are all different and how we are all unique and how we all are going to be accepted. And I also uh, put into this presentation my sketches. So those, those are the actual sketches that I showed to the editor. And this is the final. So I'm trying to be as, as close as possible to the final one 
because the people who are not artists, they, it's very hard for them to imagine what will happen in the composition. Because there's a lot of money in animation and publishing and uh, illustration. They want to be really sure whether this money, which is going to be invested in, in, in your project, is going to be uh, to pay back, actually. And this is the thing. And uh, sketch and the final. Sketch and final. As you can see, because it was about him trying to figure out how to walk on the high heels, uh, I put this kind of flow, in, flow into the entire book. And this is the final, and this is the last page in the book. So he's very confident that he's just playing soccer. Over there. And this is the very end of my presentation, so in a few minutes you're not going to be my hostages anymore. <laughs> so, uh, just one more story. And in the next couple of sli uh, slides, I will try to prove that the illustrator or artist or creative being is always on duty. If my narrative is, is clear enough, I don't have to include explanations, so you will be able to understand if everything 